Hey guys, welcome back to Salmon Industries. If your Festiva shifter looks something like this, with enough play in it to smack your passenger's leg when you're going into fifth, then this is the video for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace all the bushings in the linkage, as well as how to make your own short shifter. Let's get to it. First, you need to jack up your car. I like to get it up pretty high because you're going to be crawling around a lot under the transmission, under the center of the car, and uh, there's not a whole lot of room to work down there. As always, be sure to use jack stands. Below the car now, you can see the shift linkage running right down the center of the car, basically right above the exhaust. Right here is where it connects to the shifter inside the car. So this rod is the shifter, and it goes up into the car, and this bolt holds it to it. Now you can already see how loose this is with this big gap here between the shifter and then the uh, U-shaped joint here. That's actually where there should be bushings, and we currently have none. And if you follow this rod along, up to the front, you can see where it attaches to the transmission. We have a pin here that actually needs ground out to your place to replace these two bushings. You can see where it's loose here as well. And then on the front side, another shoulder bolt holding it to the transmission. So the first thing we'll do, pop out this front bolt, pop out that back bolt, and then take the entire linkage out of the car so we can look at it better. Now, depending on whether or not this bolt has been replaced by somebody or messed with before, the nut and head can be anything between 12, 13, or 14. So this one's looking like 12 for the bolt, and then... Fourteen for the nut. I like to take this nut off the rest of the way with my finger because on the back side here, uh, this nut will actually fall down into your core support if you're not careful to catch it. So, a little access on the bottom. Take your fingers up through here and take it the rest of the way off. And there it is. Now that the front's disconnected, we'll go back to the back. Same process on the back side. Find the two correct wrench sizes and just pull the bolt off. This one's got a good bit of dirt, mud, and oil on it. Pretty common for a Festiva. Let's try our 12 again. Nope, oh, that one's a 13. Pardon my slow pacing through here. Trying to unbolt and film and grab tools all while under the car ended up being a little bit harder than I thought it'd be. Now, before you pull the bolt all the way out, make sure you're holding on to this linkage, otherwise it'll smack you in the head. All right, there's that bolt. And now, back at the front of the car, you can just pull the linkage through, and there it is. Now I'll take this back up on the workbench, and uh, we'll look at that stuck-in pin and see how the whole thing gets held together. Alright, so this is the linkage out of the car. This is where it attaches to the shifter on the back side, and up front on the trans side. You can see here that now I've cleaned it off. This is that pin. So in the pins, also two more bushings. As you can see, this one is completely missing its bushings. And when I took the bolts out of this one, there were no bushings on the bolts at all. So this one was about as bad as it gets as far as bushings go. You have two bolts. The shorter one goes on the back side. And each of, your bolts, each of these shoulder bolts actually has a lock washer that goes with the nut. So when you take it apart, make sure you don't lose the little lock washers. And the long one goes up front. Now. To replace the bushings in the centerpiece, you actually need to grind this pin out and replace it with the bolt. So I have some of those here. Uh, I'll go grab them. These are the OEM Kia shift bushings. 
They're uh, a little hard, rubbery plastic. I know some people think that, you know, the plastic ones degrade quickly or that, you know, obviously they broke before. Why'd you put them in again? But you got to keep in mind that they lasted almost 30 years in that car before they finally fell apart. So another 30 years for a few bucks is great. And then here's the replacement bolt. So these are uh, machined down from another cap screw down to the exact size to fit to replace that pin. All these bushings and the replacement bolt are actually available right now from the Festiva store. The FestivaStore.com. Uh, it's run by a great guy. Been providing parts for the community for a long time. Tons of really cool stuff for your Festiva. I'll link them down below in the description. But I'd highly recommend going there to get all your bushings and this replacement bolt. So we'll take this over to the vise now. Now pay attention to the orientation of this piece. You'll see when you look closely at it, there's a big side to the hole and a smaller side. That's because the shoulder bolt actually sits here and then butts up against this edge once it's inside. Same thing on the back. If you look closely at the back side where it goes to the shifter, you'll notice it has a slight angle in one direction. That'll be important when we go and install it again later. So for now, I'm going to put it in the vise. I'm going to go ahead and keep note that the big hole is over here on the left side. So I'm going to take this apart and put it back on correctly. Here, I'm just going to use a regular cutoff wheel on the grinder and just kind of top off the edge of this pin. close you can kind of see the circle outline here where the pin is so grab a hammer and a punch and just kind of punch it straight through you can see it pushing out there and there's the pin you can see how the pin even has a shoulder on it similar to how the shoulder bolts work. And so our replacement bolt, the shoulder length is almost identical to this piece here. So I'll move him out of the way. And again, with the pin ground out, we have a small side and a large side. So then we're gonna take our bolt here, which has the shoulder here. I'll pop that lock nut off. And you're gonna take two bushings one on each side of the tube. Pretty good squeeze, get that one in there. Bottom one still needs a little bit of encouragement. There, now that's it. And then keeping that same orientation, slip this guy back on. Turn it over to the side here. Now our bolt has to go through the big hole. You can see it's, the bolt will go all the way through and hit the edge of the metal there and stop. Then, same deal as before, a quick wrench and a hex key. We'll tighten this guy down. 13 millimeter wrench for the nut and our hex key on the bottom. Now with the shoulder bolt, you can't really over tighten it since that shoulder stops on the edge of that base. So we'll take it down, get it pretty snug, and a little bit extra there. Now you can see even with it being pretty snug, we still have some 
it's free to rotate, but now it's no longer loose up and down. And that's all you need to do for the linkage itself. Now we'll go back down to the car and reinstall it. Now, earlier I mentioned, when I was showing it on the bench there, that this actually has a direction it has to go back in the car due to the way that the piece by the shifter is angled. So looking at the front of the car here, you want the bigger hole on the front to be facing towards the passenger side so that the piece by the shifter angles that way. So big hole, passenger side. Now, back under the car, we have another bushing that we have to replace. So right here, that's where the linkage was attached earlier. If you look right above it, you will see the shift stabilizer bar. This bar is what holds your shifter up front and keeps it from wanting to rock back and forth. So there's a little stud on the trans, and then in here is another big bushing. This one's already been replaced, <clears throat> so I'm not going to take it off on this particular car. But replacing it's just as easy. You just take off this nut here, and then this whole stabilizer bar will just slide off of this stud. Push the bushing out with your thumb, press the replacement in, and put it back on. This bushing is also available from the Festiva store. Now, going back to our linkage. Basically, we're going to install it in reverse order of how we took it out. I'm just going to slide it in, back to where it was, and then same deal as we were doing on the bench earlier, we're going to push our new replacement bushings with the rod. You can actually see right here a little piece of plastic from the old ones. That's pretty much all that's left of the old ones on this car. Maybe a little bit of plastic left actually on this side too. Make sure you remove any bit left of the old bushings. So right here, you actually see behind all this grease was actually a bit of a bushing. There's a quick screwdriver or a pick, whatever you need, but make sure you pull all that old plastic out of there. So I'm going to grab a pick, and I'm going to pick all this out. There's this one. Not much left there. Same thing on the other side. That one's going to need a pick. Okay. Now that all the bad ones are out, we're going to take our replacement ones and push them into the hole, just like we did on the bench. So there's that one in. I'm actually going through the access hole in the cross member, trying to get the other one in. My hand is probably going to block a lot of the view here, but... All right. Now both of those are fully seated, so we'll take our linkage. Again, the big hole goes towards the passenger side. We will slip him over our bushings. And you may end up needing to take some pliers or a pry bar or something and, and pry these two metal tabs wider a little bit just from it uh, being tightened by somebody else in the past or somebody tried to use the wrong bolt in here. This one, though, should slip over our bushings. I'll try to get it centered up. And then we'll grab the longer of our two shoulder bolts. Bolt goes in from the passenger side. Wiggle it around here to get the other side all the way through. Usually, uh, screwing it in with the wrench will help, so I'll work it with the wrench some as I'm bolting it. A 
I'll try moving the camera around for a second so you guys can see what I see. So here's our linkage from the bottom side. You can see I got the bolt part way in. And then over here, you can see I'm just starting to get some of the threads to stick through. So I'll keep bolting that in and getting that in there. And the nut. Getting the nut in this tiny little hole is a real pain sometimes. If you drop it a few times, just try to pay attention to where it falls. Normally it'll get stuck inside that cross member. I dropped it once. Normally it'll get stuck inside that cross member. Stuck inside that cross member. Stuck inside that cross member. Twenty minutes later. Well, after dropping the nut a few times and losing it in the cross member, I finally have it again. This time slightly degreased. Hopefully I can uh, get a little bit of a grip on it this time. Oh, nope. Just dropping it again. Go ahead and snug this one up, same way as we did the middle one. And that one snug. Now, before I put in the back one, we're actually going to go ahead and do a short throw shifter install on this Festiva. Now, there's two basic ways to do this. The cheaper one, and the one that doesn't fit quite as nicely, is to get a Honda Civic short throw shifter. These are really cheap and easy to get on eBay. This is like a... This is like seven or eight bucks. Basically, it just moves your fulcrum point up a little bit. So that way, every time you shift, you're actually doing less movement. Or, if you have a welder, you can take the factory shifter and simply cut and weld a little extension on the bottom here to move this pivot point down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the process for cutting and welding the stock one. But then I'll also go back and show you the extra steps you have to take if you want to install the Honda one instead, which includes shortening the little cut spring and adding washers in to take up some space on the bolt. All right, back up on the workbench now, we're going to start modifying our shifter to be a short shifter. So this is a fully stocked shifter out of the car. Uh, currently, I have it so that the bend is facing us. And if you look at the top, you'll actually see that the base piece is not centered with the the shift rod. It actually is slightly longer on the left side with it bending towards us. So when we weld it back together, make sure you keep that facing to the left. So the basic goal is to cut it in half right about here, and then we're going to weld on a spacer. Uh, I bought these from the hardware store, it's like a solid steel spacer piece, or this is like a big off coupler. Uh, I've used this one in the past. It's nice and thick, so it's easy to weld to. So I'm going to use that for this time because I'm not a welder. So uh, the thicker it is, 
I think the easier it's going to be for me. So, back to our grinder with the cutoff wheel. We're just going to kind of cut it right. You'll see it kind of has a bend to it, then a straight section. I'm going to try to cut it in half, basically in the middle of that straight section there. I'm going to go ahead and clean off some of the paint off the edges of that so we get a good weld. Then, since this coupler is zinc plated, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grind off some of that zinc coating. Now you'll see that it almost threads on just a little bit, just kind of hold it in place for us. And then this will go right here. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now I'll go ahead and get the welder started. Put a couple tacks on there and then start welding all the way through. I'll go ahead and tack up the top piece. Again, make sure to watch that offset. Now, before I weld this all the way solid, I'm gonna make sure there's no more bushing left up inside there from the old bushings, just because all that old plastic gets pretty gross it starts to burn so that little piece there would have caught fire not fun to breathe all right looks pretty good i'm gonna go ahead and weld it up fully I'll go ahead and hit that with the wire wheel and see how it looks. You know, for being not a welder, I don't think that looks too bad. Of course, I'm sure somebody in the comments can tell me how wrong I am, but that's fine. So I'll go ahead and grind it down a little bit just to smooth this up some. Uh, you want to make sure that down here where that plastic retainer goes that it's nice and smooth. So we'll take off some of those little weld BBs and all that. There we have it, one modified short throw shifter. We'll go ahead and hit it with a little black paint, clean it up a little bit, make sure it doesn't rust when it sits down there in the car, and I think that'll be all.
Not too bad. So next, we're gonna start installing our short shifter. Put the short shifter in. First, you gotta take your old shifter out. So to start that, you just take the knob off. Quick tip here, take the shift knob off while the linkage is still attached to the car. It makes this way easier when you're not having to hold it still. Then you can take the shifter boot off, pull up over the top. If you actually look on the boot, it has a piece in the middle, a little insert that right here, this little lip built into the boot actually clips on around the base of the shifter. So when you go to install this later, you just gotta kind of stretch that over and hold it down. That's what holds this to the floor. Then we'll take off this little piece of rubber here. Same thing, it kind of stretches over the lip. That's what keeps all the road noise and air out of your car, so don't tear that. Now you can see the shifter itself. You can see a little ball in here moving around. That's actually held in with a giant spring. That's what actually retains this to the car. So I'll zoom in a little bit here. So turn this out of the way. If you look, you will see the edge of that spring right here. It's one little small flat piece. So what you wanna do is with your screwdriver or a little pry bar, you just kind of pry the edge of that spring out. And you'll see I have the edge here. You just kind of pull that out. Start working it around the edge. And it'll start to uncoil out of the holder. Now getting this back in is not a lot of fun, so try to pay attention to which way it was facing when you took it out. There you go. Whole spring just pops out. Now that's full of grease, so I'm going to try to grab that with this little rag here. Keep my fingers clean for the camera a little bit. But that's what holds it in, is this little spring clip here. And then you can see on the top, there's a little flat edge that we were prying on earlier. With that out of the way, and the shifter unbolted from the bottom, you can start to pull it out top. First thing you'll see, there's a white bushing that's on top of the ball here. So we're gonna pull that out. Same thing, it'll be covered in that grease. And you can see it actually sits a certain way. It's got a bit of an oval shape to it. So make sure that oval faces front to back when you put it back in. Then the shifter itself will come out. Like that. And you can see there's also a little boot on the bottom of it. And uh, this one's torn, so there's two pieces of little boot. And then another piece of plastic. This one is, has a relief cut into it so that you can get it off of the ball itself. And if you look, you'll see when we take this off, it could actually go in two ways. It has this piece here and kind of like this cut out in the bottom. Make sure you put it back in. You're putting it so that this little smooth side is up because the ball of the shifter rests in that little smooth groove. And the same thing with the oval cutouts facing front to back. So we're going to be installing our modified shifter that we rolled up earlier. Hold up. I know this looks nothing like the shifter I just made. That's because this is the first shifter I made. Then it broke, right in half. As soon as I tried to shift with it, I'm not a welder. So for the rest of this video, please ignore this spindly piece of trash. You can see I've already pressed the bushings into their spots so we can install it easier. However, if you're gonna be putting a Civic short throw in there. If you look, you'll see the Civic ball is actually just a little bit larger than the stock one. And on some of these from eBay, some of them are even bigger than this one. To get these to fit, you'll assemble it the same way you would the Festival one. Put the cut back on, slide the white one over the top. But then when you go to put it in, you'll find that you can't get the spring to quite fit in. So for the Civic shifter, what you'll do is Look down here on the bottom side of the spring, right about where it meets up with itself here, and you're just gonna cut off half of a coil. So you start here at the edge, go around halfway, and just cut it off there and to shorten the spring down some. So that way the Civic Shifter will fit all the way in. If you still cannot get the spring to fit in, you can cut half another 
uh, you can cut another half of a coil off. It's so like one coil total. Uh, if you still can't get it in, you might have to keep pushing. I really wouldn't cut off any more than one coil. But since we're putting a stock one back in, we don't need to trim it this time. So I'll just slide this plastic back on. Just like before, just kind of open it. Put the pieces facing front to back. Slide that back in. It kept getting a little hung up on the edge of the bushing. Uh, if yours is getting stuck like this one was, just pop one of those bushings out and reinstall it under the car once you get the shifter in place. Tight fit with the bushings already in. Make sure our plastic's rotated the right direction. Then over the top of it, same thing. Make sure the smooth side faces the ball. So we'll slide that in. And now try to get that spring back in there. So you can kind of rotate and twist it into place a little bit. And I like to push it on one side. You hear it kind of clicked into place. And now all of it besides the one edge is in. So I'm going to hold it with one finger over here to keep it held in place. Then use my screwdriver to try to pop that last bit back down into it. And again, all the grease covered in does not make this very easy. So if it takes you a while, just keep at it. And there it is. Click back into place. I will rotate it some to get it back out of the way. Try it again. You want this flat piece to be off to the side like it was when you took it out. Otherwise, your shifter is going to want to hit it some. So I'll just rotate it around like that. Push it back down. And there it is. Now the short throw's in there. I'll leave it loose for now, just so I can go ahead and finish installing it on the bottom side. Make sure that uh, we didn't make it too long and it hit the exhaust or anything like that. So, back under the car to put the linkage back on. So, back under the car, we're going to reattach the linkage to our shifter. Now, while I'm down here, I'm going to show you guys if we'd use the Civic shifter here. If you look, when we put it in, it's actually a loose fit in our linkage. You can see where we have a, a pretty good gap in between here. So when you go to put this back in, the Civic linkage actually uses bearings instead of bushings. So all you need to do is stack a couple washers on each side to take up this gap. So that way it sits there and doesn't move back and forth. And then just use the stock bolt, tighten it back down, and you are good to go. In our case, we went ahead and used that modified shift that we rolled up earlier. So to install that, or, you know, just a regular stock shifter, similar to what we did up front, you just have your bushings inside, and we'll move our linkage up in there and put in the bolt. Again, remember that there's a big side of the hole and a small side, the bolt goes in the big side. So I will grab those tools and put them back in. Lined up. There we go. Then the lock washer. And the nut. Just like that. Now, while we're down here, I can show you guys from where we welded it earlier. If you look, we have plenty of clearance between our shifter and our exhaust pipe. So that means we're not going to be too long for our shifts. It's not going to bump or anything. We're good to go. Now we'll go back up top, assemble the shift knob, put the boot back on, and we'll see how tight our shifts are. All right, now back in the car. We'll go ahead and put our little uh, 
air seal back over the lip there. So the bottom side has like the seal for the lip right over the top. Now to the bottom, we're gonna show you how, how to get the boot back on. The boot rests kind of with the top facing towards the back a little bit. So we'll slip the guy over. And if I turn it inside out, you'll see there's that big lip I was talking about. So you're just gonna wanna stretch that all the way around this lip here. So you can see you don't quite have it there on the back edge. There we go. Now it's going to stay in place. And last thing, throw your shift on back on. If anybody wants, or if you're looking for an aftermarket shift knob, the thread pitch for the Festiva shifter is M10 by 1.25. If you switch to the Honda shifter, the thread is M10 by 1.5. I'll put that in the description, as well as a little link to uh, Sandman Industries 3D printed shift knob. It's an exact copy of the shape of the stock one, but made of ABS plastic so that we don't get the gummy residue left by the old rubber of the 30 year old shift knob. And that's it installed. Now, you can see this is in gear, almost no wiggle. It's way better than it used to be. Then up, next gear, same thing, no wiggle. Neutral, now neutral, you actually know where it's at. In gear, in gear. Now looking from the side view, you can see how much shorter our shifts are front to back. Third, Neutral, fourth. Super short shifts now that we made that custom short shifter. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please send me a PM or put it in a comment below. And I hope to see you next time. See ya. Well, I hope my battery was charged. Oh, for fuck's sake.